The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins in the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Good evening and welcome to Compline on this Saturday, the 28th of May, in the year of our Lord 2021. Uh, we have two saints to commemorate today. Mechtild, uh, a... a uh, uh, mystic spiritual writer uh, from um, sort of the low country of Germany um, wrote in low German um, which is actually not related to its geography uh, but she is uh, one of the um, really interesting spiritual writers of her time whose work was kind of lost uh, until late 19th early 20th century people started looking through libraries for things just like this um, she was a Beguine, um, you know, one of the uh, sort of quasi-monastic communities. Um, wrote some really, really cool stuff. Uh, the Flowing Light of Divinity is her great work. Um, and she uh, lived to see her work uh, pu published in Latin, which was uh, kind of the language of scholars. But she herself uh, specifically was looking at uh, those people who were not highly educated, who still needed uh, or thirsted for spiritual work. Second saint is John Calvin, uh, notably uh, one of the reformers, although not in cahoots with Martin Luther, uh, lived a little bit later than, than Luther, uh, went to Paris to study theology as, as a young man, got his master's degree at 19. Ooh, that's smart. Uh, his father insisted he practice law. When his father died, he went back to theology. Uh, in some Protestant countries, before you could be a preacher, uh, you had to be certified by the town or city council. And so he was finally uh, certified in Basel and uh, preached there, then moved on to Geneva. Uh, preached for a couple of years. They got, they got kind of scared off by his theology. He preached a little bit more uh, a couple of years later. Uh, and his work is largely responsible for the tradition we know of as Presbyterian. Uh, so, uh, yay for John Calvin. Uh, one of the things that is particularly interesting, although not widely known, is that his description of how churches should be governed um, is particularly well thought out. And according to those people who are Presbyterians, including one of my preaching mentors, uh, this is one of the things that continues to attract people to the denomination, that patterns of leadership and authority are very, very clear. So, Mechtild and John Calvin, uh, don't know what they would have said if they lived in the same time together, but uh, God bless them both. Uh... Psalm tonight is Psalm 136 and the Old Testament lesson. Again, this is this sort of odd week. Uh, we've just had uh, <clears throat> uh, the Feast of the Ascension on Thursday, and we've had some odd lessons kind of around it. Uh, this is from Numbers, and it is a lesson concerning the giving of the power to prophesy. Uh, and who can do it and where can they do it is, is the salient question. We meet Eldad and Medad, or Medad, uh, and um, th this whole story. This is a story, by the way, that we do here on Sunday morning. So, we will continue with Psalm 136. Give thanks to the Holy One who is good, whose mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods, whose mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Mighty One, whose mercy endures forever who only does great wonders, for God's mercy endures forever, 
who by wisdom made the heavens, for God's mercy endures forever, who spread out the earth upon the waters, for God's mercy endures forever, who created the great lights, for God's mercy endures forever, the sun to rule the day, for God's mercy endures forever, the moon and the stars to govern the night, for God's mercy endures forever who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, for God's mercy endures forever, and brought out Israel from among them, for God's mercy endures forever, with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, for God's mercy endures forever, who divided the Red Sea in two, for God's mercy endures forever, and made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for God's mercy endures forever, but swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, for God's mercy endures forever. Who led the people through the wilderness, for God's mercy endures forever. Who struck down great kings, for God's mercy endures forever. And slew mighty kings, for God's mercy endures forever. Sion, the king of the Amorites, for God's mercy endures forever. And Og, the king of Bashan, for God's mercy endures forever. And gave away their land for an inheritance, for God's mercy endures forever, an inheritance for Israel, God's servant, for God's mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our low estate, for God's mercy endures forever, and delivered us from our enemies, for God's mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all creatures, for God's mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, whose mercy endures forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> so the lesson is from Numbers, the book after Leviticus and before Deuteronomy, chapter 11, 16 and 17, then we skip to 24 and 29. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people, and officers over them. Appointment of officers was something that was done way back uh, in Exodus. Take them to their place, bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there, and I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them, and they shall bear the burden of the people along with you, so that you will not have to bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered the seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then God came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was upon him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad, the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. So they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. This is the word of the Lord. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. 
Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we believe your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into heaven, so we may also in heart and mind there ascend and with him continually dwell, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Draw the souls of your people into your, lo into your love, O God, that like your servant Mechthild, that we may yearn to be fully yours, for you know us better than we can know ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Sovereign and holy God, you brought John Calvin from a study of legal systems to understand the godliness of your divine laws as revealed in Scripture. Fill us with a like zeal to teach and preach your word that the whole world may come to know your Son, Jesus Christ, the true word and wisdom, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Take a moment now and call to mind anybody who would appreciate your prayers this evening. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Compline this evening. We hope you will share this with family and friends who'd like something to think and pray about at the end of the day. Stay calm, stay connected, stay church, stay safe out there. Wear your masks, keep your distance until this current wave goes by, however long it takes. And remember the words of our old friend, Louis Goldstein, God bless you all real good. <laughs>